And so there are so many people in the world, and, and, and you know, you may be watching this right now, and you have these incredible ideas, and what you think is missing is motivation. And that's not true. In my language, you all have the same purpose. And that purpose is to reflect and to reveal the cosmos in a way that has never happened before. You can say the divine presence, you can say great God of the universe, you can say divine life. Whatever it is, we have the purpose to reveal this presence, this uh, cosmic happening, to localize the cosmic happening in a way that has never ever happened before. We all have different missions of how we do that. Uh, uh, but uh, our purpose is to reveal that and that is how you break free from the status quo people always say oh haters motivate me that wine right there drives me insane if negativity is your motivation it's impossible to turn your ears off to the good and the bad or to pick one or the other you know if you're listening to their negativity you're also going to have big ears we call it to the compliments and the yes men and the minute you're allowing someone else to control your day or control your motivation or control your wavelength of life you set yourself up for failure these are these are amazing times and, and in order for us to wake up we need a wake-up call and um, if you can frame the circumstances to see that it's an opportunity for everybody to pause and retreat from their lives. And by removing the constant stimulation in their external environment that reminds them of who they think they are as a personality, they're not going to the same places, they're not seeing the same people, they're not doing the same things. And they're actually confined to kind of a, a personalized retreat in the comfort of their own home. The death of emotions is primary because when your emotions always skew the way you see reality. And Socrates, he was very different than what you hear today. And everybody today is like, oh, reality is what you make of it, what, what you want it to be. Socrates is the, the, the polar opposite. He says, look, your emotions are getting in the way of what's really out there. You need to start checking your emotions at the door and just see what the world actually is in itself. I have this misguided notion that everybody in life should just be honest, just be themselves. Whereas the truth is, we're never really ourselves. As a social animal, we're always wearing masks, we're continually acting. But if you looked at yourself in the course of the day, you would realize, anybody would realize, how many different masks you wear. Now the beauty behind this is who you're going to emerge as and sure the conditions in our environment are causing us to be uncertain and in uncertainty when things uh, we can't predict certain things we move from everything that's predictable and known to this realm called the unknown. Mindset I'm defining as what's possible in your life, right? Think about the area that you're not making progress in. And mindset is the set of assumptions and attitudes we have around something, around how the world works, especially what we believe is possible, what we believe we're capable of, what we believe we deserve. And the fact about human beings is that we are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things because our brains are trying to keep us alive. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're going to have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary. You have to ignore the, the externalities, the third parties and, and their subjective views of you, otherwise you are setting yourself up for failure. And it, it breeds a false sense of ego. Um, we have such a small window of opportunity in this life to, to self-generate success. And every day we wake up, that window's closing at an alarming rate. And every minute you waste worrying about somebody that has zero real effect on your life, that window close, comes closer. And, and one day you're gonna wake up and look back and that window's gonna have slammed shut on your ass. And you're going to look back and regret all those minutes wasted worrying about somebody that didn't even know you. Limitless is not about being perfect. It's about progressing and advancing 
beyond what you believe is possible. Everything begins with a thought. Where if you don't have love, if you don't have enough money, if you don't have enough health, somewhere, somehow, you've had a thought that's blocked you. And all our beliefs about money, everything really starts so early. But the great news is you can change your thought. When you live it, you leave it. When you live it, you leave it. You, what you're saying is wonderful, but what you're doing is penetrating. It's shaping the lives of those who are watching. And I realized that the bigger I dream, the more contagious I became. A person who's living a lie, they, they cannot be well balanced. They cannot be well adjusted in, in themselves. Because you can lose it all, but you can't lose your principles. If you live a principle-centered life, your foundation is solid. Whereas if you, let's say for instance, you have a, you have a great company, you have a lot of money, and you base your life on, on having this. Well, you're going to be an insecure person because money and fame and fortune is, is frail. You can lose it in an instant. You can wake up tomorrow and for whatever reason, things fall apart. Now, if you based your life on this, your base of your life will crumble. You can't base your life on something that's, that's frail, that can be taken from you. So, according to Stephen R. Covey, the human psyche will always be healthy if it bases its life on principle. There's effluence, affluence, and influence. Affluence is generosity. It's giving. There can be no permanent affluence unless there's effluence in your consciousness. So first, you're in service to something higher. And you begin to ask yourself, because you've been given everything, you're a composite spiritual idea that carries the infinite in ways beyond your wildest imagining, you have to live in the inquiry of what can I give? What can I share? How can I shine? How can I radiate? You, you have to give up the thought of what can I get from the world? Sign up for the goal, sign up for the inconvenience it's going to cost you. Sign up for that. Sign up. I sign up every day, every day to the inconvenience. The goal looks sexy, the inconvenience looks costly. But if you sign up for the inconvenience, then the goal will take care of itself. There's no more free moment in your life when you can hear something said about you and completely dismiss it. Uh, and your day, the wavelength of your day has not altered completely. It is truly being free from within yourself and, and living a life in your own mind, unjudged by others. Because life is hard enough. And it's going to beat you down at every opportunity. Why well, add one more thing? Take your attention off of everything that's known. And if you do that properly and you're not aware of your body, if you're not aware of the people in your life that you identify with, you're not thinking about your cell phone or any object, you're not thinking about where you're sitting, where you work, where you need to go. You're not thinking about the future, the past, or the present moment. Then what are you? <laughs> Your consciousness. And now that is the eye of the needle that passes you through to the quantum field. You can't enter that place as a somebody. You've got to enter as a nobody. The planet is Mother Earth, Gaia, rainforests, rivers, three-fourths water, trees. It's it's a magnificent, luminous being that's becoming more and more conscious of itself. And then there is the world. The world is held together by opinions, points of view, positionalities, beliefs, which is why individuals can be on the same spot on the planet, but be in different worlds. Are you willing to not quite know what's there? but that something is there is greater than you. Are you willing to say, my life has to make a huge difference? A you know, life well lived is what makes you enthusiastic. Find enthusiasm and you're at the highest level of the human experience. Enthusiasm, it's actually, the, the path to happiness is enthusiasm. Your life comes down to your decisions. And if you change your decisions, you will change everything.